What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Vandal Hurry Up. I am Greg Sussman. For the first time in a while, I'm joined by Tom Vecchio of Fandle. What's happening, Tom? I'm good. You know, we had NASCAR and golf and UFC taking the spotlight for a while, but, uh, you know, NFL coming back, uh, NBA, NHL, uh, time to hop back in. Absolutely. The NFL, if all things go well, training camp is now less than a month away. It's July 1st, people. So let's get into a little NFL draft fantasy football style as we're talking about the players that right now in early drafts have an ADP of over 100. These are guys that you can get well, for basically a cost of nothing. So let's get into it, Tom, and let's begin with the player with an ADP of 108, according to the fantasy football calculator. And that he is Emmanuel Sanders, who is a really good fit in New Orleans. Emmanuel Sanders is looking great, an ADP of 108, like you said. And, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. First of all, the Saints play in higher scoring games. We know that in the Dome, the course field of the NFL. And really, there's a big difference between Michael Thomas, their number one wide receiver, arguably the best in the league, and then everyone else on their team. They've been lacking that wide receiver, too, really over the past few seasons. Ted Ginn, Traquan Smith. You know, Alvin Kamara had a bit of a down year, but when you look at the production from Michael Thomas to everyone else, the gap is massive, and there's an opportunity there for Manny Sanders. We have Michael Thomas last year leading the team in targets, yards, receptions, tied for touchdowns. He had 185 targets. Kamara was second with 97. He had 149 receptions, and Kamara was second with 81. So there is a big gap where Manny Sanders can fit in there, get downfield, open up the offense, and just basically rack in you know, the fantasy points with an ADP of 108 right now. So really like him in this spot this year. Emmanuel Sanders was traded midway through last season, headed over to San Francisco. And remember, this was his year coming back from that major Achilles tear. Now, totally healthy, playing with Drew Brees in a dome? Yeah. I like our odds here with New Orleans' Emmanuel Sanders, especially with an ADP sitting at 108. Let's move on to a player whose ADP is 111, and that is Matthew Stafford, who I feel like people kind of forget that first half last year, Tom. Matthew Stafford was really, really good. And now he's back, he's back, he's healthy, and he could be a steal here at ADP 111. Yeah, like you said, that first half of the year, he only played in eight games, 200, uh, you know, 2,500 yards, 2,499 yards, if you want to be exact. He had 19 touchdowns through eight games, was averaging over 300 yards a game on pace for career highs. If he stayed on that pace, he would have finished uh, second in the league in total passing yards and second in touchdowns. Obviously, that's just on pace if he stayed healthy, et cetera, et cetera. But we know that Detroit doesn't have the best defense. They're going to be playing from behind in most scenarios. And their offense is pretty solid. We know that they have Galladay, their number one, number one wide receiver. We have to work with the backfield, them drafting Swift. They still have Perry and Johnson. But they have the kind of, you know, ancillary parts with Marvin Jones, Danny Amendola, TJ Hawkinson, where they have the parts around him. And as long as Stafford stays healthy, like we're getting a really solid late-round quarterback after you've loaded up on receivers, after you pick those running backs, bringing a ton of value and a ton of upside. The pieces are there for Matthew Stafford to have a really nice year. And I think what's really cool is that you don't even need him to be better than he was last year. You just need him to do what he did last year and stay healthy. Hopefully that's exactly what he accomplishes here in 2020 when you have a quarterback late. Make it Matthew Stafford. Up next, we'll move over to ADP 118, and that's Daryl Henderson. And this is an interesting one because I've talked to Jim Salas a lot about what's going on with the Los Angeles Rams, and you have a running back they drafted. You have Malcolm Brown, and you have Daryl Henderson. You like Henderson here at 118. How come? So, like you said, there's, uh, you know, a lot of talk about the Rams' backfield. Gurley gone. They have three running backs. They drafted Cam Akers this past year. They drafted Henderson two years ago, and it's just totally unclear right now. And we get that. And, you know, this is the kind of situation where you would want to, like, check in. Where was he June? Where was he, you know, July 1st today? Where is he going to be on August 1st? See if there's any trends. Because if you can jump on board now, knowing that he wins the job, that would be awesome. Uh, we want to look back to actually when he was drafted coming out of Memphis. He averaged 8.9 yards per carry in his last two seasons at Memphis. I mean, he is a really, really solid runner. Now, a rookie running back coming into the NFL with a shortened, abbreviated, less than full preseason, whatever you want to call it this year, I want to kind of side with the guy that at least has shown some capability, was somewhat of a high prospect coming out of college. And given the fact that this backfield is completely unclear, you know, he's up there with having 
you know, more experience than Cam Meekers, obviously, not as much as Malcolm Brown in terms of total NFL, you know, games played, but he's a true running back that the Rams really need to rely on this season. The short offseason is going to be tough for rookies to adjust. And Daryl Henderson does have a year in Sean McVay's system. We'll see what he has. Malcolm Brown's the guy I'm targeting in this spot because you get him late. You mentioned that experience factor. I think Malcolm Brown, Daryl Henderson, both these guys have some value late in drafts. Up next, ADP 139. This is a guy I love. It's Preston Williams, who, again, you just need him to stay healthy. He impressed us last summer in the preseason and cut off to a really nice start with Miami Dolphins. Well, then he got hurt. But if he's healthy with Ryan Fitzpatrick entrenched or to attack by Loa as the quarterback, you got to like what you're getting at the Dolphins' number two wide receiver. Absolutely. Like you said, impressed us last summer, was off to uh, you know, a hot, hot start in the first eight games, had the ACL injury. He was averaging 7.5 targets per game, over 50 yards per game, only played the eight. Uh, you know, this is a player I like in, you know, dynasty, if you're in a dynasty league or some type of keeper league, like this is a player I want to jump on early. They drafted to uh, whether he starts the first game or not, or any games this season, you know, he's there for the future. They drafted three offensive linemen, uh, you know, in the draft. So they have a new quarterback. They have, you know, the protection around him. You're getting a young wide receiver ready to develop. And best of all, he's basically free in the 12th round. ADP 139 right now, like jump on board with Preston Williams this year. Like we said, for a while for the Dolphins last summer, Preston Williams jumped on everybody's radar. He got up that hard hot start before tearing his ACL. We know Ryan Fitzpatrick is a gunner. And yeah, Devontae Parker finally broke out here in year five. But Preston Williams was a guy that everybody was all over. And now basically free? Yeah, we'll take our chances here with Preston Williams late. Let's move on to another wide receiver that was good most of last year. It's John Brown, who's costing you nothing at pick 145. I know everybody's all over Stephon Diggs with the Buffalo Bills, but John Brown for a lot of last season was Josh Allen's favorite target. We know about uh, Brown's speed. We know about Allen's ability to throw the deep ball. This connection was good last year. Why wouldn't it be good again? So for the Bills, adding Steph Diggs is certainly something we need to pay attention to. Who is he going to be taking targets away from? But if we look back to two years ago when he was with Minnesota, obviously, he posted over 1,000 yards, and so did Adam Thielen. So it's not as if Diggs can't be in an offense where another receiver is, isn't able to be productive. We look at last season's stats, and we see that John Brown posted over 1,000 receiving yards. He was one of 25 wide receivers to do so. Right now, he is being drafted as wide receiver 55 with an ADP of 145 overall. Now, could we expect some of his stats to regress? Of course, with the addition of Diggs, but it's not as if we're looking for him to overshadow Diggs and be better than him. We're getting him at ADP 145. So by the time you're drafting him or looking to draft him, you have the core of your lineup set. You have those top tier receivers and running backs. This is a guy that's situationally very good. They play the Dolphins twice a year. Uh, this is a player that I want to be adding as a fourth receiver on my team and is free in drafts at 145. When you're looking for those depth pieces, look no further than Smokey Brown at 145. Like Tom said, most of your roster is set by the time you're drafting Brown, but somebody that you can put it in your flex spot, use as a bye week replacement, John Brown's going to have his games, especially given the schedule where you're playing the Dolphins twice, for instance. You have uh, some of these other teams where the secondary it is just not good. John Brown could take advantage. And you're absolutely right. With Stephon Diggs, with Adam Thielen, leaves plenty of room for John Brown to still get his in 2020. One last player we want to mention before we wrap up, and that is at pick 168. And it's tight end Janu Smith for the Tennessee Titans. Delaney Walker, he's gone. He's still a free agent, which makes Janu Smith the man that is finally going to start at tight end. We've been calling Janu Smith to really break out for years now. Now there's nobody standing in his way. Exactly. We have to look back to last season. We can look forward to this season. It, you know, at the end of last year, he finished as tight end 20. And, you know, that's not really moving the needle for a lot of people, but there's a lot to take in. In the first seven games of the year, Delaney Walker was healthy. He played all those games, then he got hurt, the season was over. In that time, uh, Smith only had six receptions for under 100 yards. So that's not really what we want to look at. But the fact that he finished as tight end 20 in half a season, basically, of production is something that we actually want to be buying into. We have to factor in that Tennessee is going to be running the ball for the most part, you know, as the core of their offense. But really after, uh, you know, the running game, when we look at the passing for Tennessee, it's A.J. Brown. And then who? You know, Corey Davis. I'm not getting sucked into that trap again. 
uh, you know, Adam, uh, Adam Humphreys as their number two or number three wide receiver. Like there's an opportunity in this offense for passing when A.J. Brown is not the number one option or when he's covered or when he has a bad matchup. And I think Johnny Smith is that player considering he had pretty damn good production for half a season last year. I've been Delaney Walker truther forever. There was always value with him in Tennessee. And especially as he got older, no one was really interested anymore. I feel the same way about Johnny Smith. Like you said, E.J. Brown, he's really good when the ball is in his hands. Corey Davis, let's not do that again. And Derrick Henry is not going to catch the football, which is going to leave a lot of targets available for Johnny Smith. And I think we're going to take advantage here with Ryan Tannehill. I really love Johnny Smith, especially at a price that costs you nothing. You can just load up on those running backs and wide receivers and then grab a late tight end like Smith and ride at your team. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Tom. I'm excited to start drafting, man. I know we got Scott's Fishbowl next week, and then the real fantasy football season kicks off. I'm pumped, man. Yeah, it's going to be a good year. Uh, let's just hopefully we get a full 16 games. Absolutely. A full 16 games in the NFL. we got a full 60 games of baseball. Let's just hope it all works out. For Tom Vecchio, I am Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for checking out the FanDuel. Hurry up, and we'll see you next week. Stay safe, everybody.